There is over a million aeroglyph walls in Egypt. Thousands and thousands of aeroglyph walls in Egypt. In the temples, in the tombs, everywhere. They tell us how they made love, they tell us how they eat, they tell us how they went to the washroom, they tell us everything about their life, everything. Not one of those walls mentioned building the pyramids. One Egyptologist, the director of the Giza, Pla Giza Plateau said, there is not one grain of evidence of any advanced civilization ever having been in Egypt prior to the Egyptians. And I thought that was one of the most accurate statements I ever heard from an archaeologist. Because if you're looking for grains of evidence of sand, you will miss it. If you're looking, if you got your head in the sand, you will miss it. But if you look up from the sand and stop looking for grains of evidence, you will see millions of tons of rocks right in front of your eyes giving you some pretty damn good evidence. Okay, the Grand Pyramid of Giza is made of 2,300,000 stones. 2,300,000 stones is stands at 481 feet of altitude. Its base is uh, 13 square ac acres. 13 square acres, that is extremely large. When you take survey picture, satellite picture of the apex of the Grand Pyramid at Giza, it is one quarter of an inch off the center of the base, that's 13 square acres. 13 acres square. One quarter of an inch off center. That's after placing 2,300,000 stones that you have cut with copper tools. <laughs> but oh, do you deny that science cannot account for everything? Yes, I do deny that science So what can't it account for? Well, I, had you brought that up in the debate, I had a number of examples that I was going to give. Uh, I think there are a good number of things that cannot be scientifically proven, but that we're all rational to accept. Let, so me, list, let me list five. Logical and mathematical truths cannot be proven by science. Science presupposes logic and math, so that to try to prove them by science would be arguing in a circle. Uh, metaphysical truths, like there are other minds other than my own, or that the external world is real, or that the past was not created five minutes ago with an appearance of age, are rational beliefs that cannot be scientifically proven. Ethical beliefs about statements of value uh, are not accessible by the scientific method. You can't show by science whether the Nazi scientists in the camps did anything evil as opposed to the scientists in Western democracies. Aesthetic judgments, number four, cannot be accessed by the scientific method because the beautiful, like the good, cannot be scientifically proven. And finally, most remarkably, would be science itself. Science cannot be justified by the scientific method. Science is permeated with um, unprovable assumptions. For example, in the special theory of relativity, the whole theory hinges on the assumption that the speed of light is constant in a one-way direction between any two points A and B. But that strictly cannot be proven. We simply have to assume that in order to hold to the theory. Yeah. 
So okay. we are, uh, none of these beliefs can be scientifically proven, and yet they are accepted by all of us. Well, I guarantee you that is extremely difficult to reproduce. In fact, there is no way engineering companies on this planet could ever reproduce that. Even with all of our modern technology, if we give them billions and billions of dollars, they couldn't come up with anything like that. Because if you cut, if you divide a quarter of an inch error by 2,300,000 stones, the accuracy at which you're placing these stones is outrageous. And we can't do anything like that. Our most accurate buildings like um, telescopes are not that accurate. They're not even close to having that kind of accuracy. As Hubble's observations were refined throughout the mid-20th century, it became clear that our expanding universe fit nicely into Lemaitre's theory of a cosmic egg, one that expanded with so much force that it overcomes the pull of gravity and keeps the universe expanding to this very day. Father Lemaitre truly is one of many fathers of the Big Bang Theory. The question of whether God is bound by the laws of science is a bit like the question. Can God make a stone that is so heavy that he cannot lift it? I don't think it is very useful to speculate on what God might or might not be able to do. Rather, we should examine what he actually does with the universe we live in. All our observations suggest that it operates according to well-defined laws. Because they've got nothing really to stand up for. They've got nothing, they've got no decent arguments, so they have to take offense. It's the only weapon they've got. What good evidence is there to think that God does exist? I believe that there are many reasons for the existence of God, but due to limits of time, I'm going to restrict myself to sketching briefly five reasons why I think God exists. Now, in all of our reasoning, we have to be careful to follow the basic rules of logic, which have governed all valid reasoning since Aristotle. Number one, then, the origin of the universe. Have you ever asked yourself where the universe came from? Why everything exists instead of just nothing? Typically, atheists have said that the universe is just eternal and uncaused. But the astrophysical evidence indicates that the universe began to exist in a great explosion called the Big Bang 15 billion years ago. Most laymen do not appreciate that not only were all matter and energy created in that event, but physical space and time themselves. This is of utmost importance, for it implies, as the Cambridge astronomer Fred Hoyle points out, that the Big Bang Theory requires the creation of the universe from nothing. Now, this tends to be very awkward for the atheist. For as Anthony Kenny of Oxford University urges, a proponent of the Big Bang Theory, at least if he is an atheist, must believe that the universe came from nothing and by nothing. But surely that doesn't make sense. Out of nothing, nothing comes. So where did the universe come from? Why does the universe exist instead of just nothing? There must have been a cause which brought the universe into being. We can summarize our argument thus far as follows. Premise one, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Two, the universe began to exist. Three, therefore, the universe has a cause. Now from the very nature of the case as the cause of space and time, this cause must be an uncaused, changeless, timeless, and immaterial being of unimaginable power which created the universe. 